Hi, everyone, and welcome to Needlepoint Living. This is a podcast that celebrates the very best that Needlepoint has to offer. I am your host, Mary Catherine, and I'm so glad that you are here. You can find out more about me and this show at needlepointliving.com. So this one is just me. I don't have a guest. Um, it already feels a little lonely and a little uh, uncomfortable for me not having a guest, but this is episode 12, which is the last episode of our first season, and um, this one is just me. So um, I wanted to take this time to thank you, our listeners, and thank our guests and let you know um, what you can kind of expect going forward um, from Needlepoint Living. So first of all, I cannot believe that I've recorded 11 episodes of a podcast. Um, when I first had this idea months ago to do a Needlepoint podcast, I had no idea if anyone would come on, and I had no idea if anyone would listen. And I cannot tell you um, how blown away I have been by the incredible support um, and engagement um, of active listeners like you. So thank you so much. It's been, it's been great. I'll tell you, so many of you have reached out and said that you look forward to this podcast every Monday and that you either walk to it or stitch to it or ride your Peloton to it and just how enriching and empowering and encouraging all of the guests have been. And I could not agree more. So, um, yeah, it's been really cool. I can't believe that, like I said, we're here at episode 12. So I will say several people have pointed out to me that initially I told you that this episode was going to, or this, yes, the season was going to last until November, which was originally true because I was going to release an episode twice a month, once every other week. But when they first came out, there was so much positive feedback and so much demand. Um, I felt that it was the right to sit, the right decision to release them once a week. So the same amount of episodes have come out, but um, you've just gotten them um, sooner. So, so you still have the same amount of content. Um, I just did not. Um, it's ending a little sooner than I had originally planned. So that's that's the story on that. Um, so, no. So, uh, what, what do I want to tell you here on this last episode? Well, I want to do a few things. One, I want to go through my guests and talk about uh, a little, give you a little feedback on each episode. And then I want to answer sort of my own questions that I presented to each guest. And then, like I said, tell you um, a little bit about what's coming up. So, to start off, you know, if you if you go back and I did I recorded this little trailer or something that I've I think I entitled why, which was a really not very creative name, but I, I wanted you to know why I wanted to do this podcast, and I said that I wanted to really ask the question: What makes Needlepoint so great? Why has this hobby, you know, captured our hearts and our wallets and um, so much of our time and energy? What makes it so great? Why do we love it so? And I wanted to highlight the lives of stitchers from across the country and um, highlight their needlepoint lives um, and certainly hope to um, inspire and connect other stitchers through the process. And um, I feel that that we have done that and I'm very grateful. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, that's cool. Okay. All right. Episode one, y'all, was Lita. Lita O'Hara is... Um, Amazing. And she was such a great guest. She was so incredibly thoughtful. And Lita continues to be just a bright light. She's a stitcher and she shares a tremendous amount of information and wisdom to help make Needlepoint um, 
more accessible and help solve problems. She just, she's so darn smart and, you know, she researches everything. She thinks about everything. You know, if she shares with you a, an acrylic paint pen that she suggests, of course, she's going to test it, you know, to be sure it doesn't bleed or whatever. So I just, I really trust Lita and, um, she, I know has been such a remarkable resource for so many of you all in this needlepoint community. And, um, I think I mentioned this on our episode. She was without a doubt the most requested guest. And I am just so grateful that she came on the show. Um, so Lita, thank you. Uh, Lita's moved to Michigan. Michigan, yes, she's moved to Michigan. Kalamazoo. So Lita, wish you all the well, all the best. Wish you all the well. Wish you all the best in Kalamazoo. And I hope, I think I'm going to see you um, later this year. So Lita, O'Hara. The Nashville needle pointer. She's not the Nash. I always say that. I say the Nashville needle pointer, but Nashville needle pointer. Lita is great. Then there's Stephanie. Y'all episode two is Stephanie. Um, Stephanie is a custom painter and a designer um, and creator of Spellbound Stitchery. But she was the episode where we talked a lot about um, our inspiration of her anatomy series and really how she thinks about spirituality through your stitching and intentionality, um, how needlepoint can be a form of prayer. And I think that's so cool. And so many of you have reached out to me to let me know how much you enjoyed that episode and what Stephanie had to offer and um, her stories behind some of her designs, particularly the anatomy collection, which I think if you didn't know the backstory, you may think, what is this? Who wants to stitch these organs? But now, you know, episode two. Um, oh gosh. And then Meg, y'all Meg Fielder is episode three. She's um, the needle point finisher. Okay? And we recorded the episode and then after we stopped recording, no lie, we stayed, I think on camera, obviously not recording, but we continued to talk for probably another hour, maybe at least maybe an hour, hour and a half. And, um, I believe it was on a Friday evening, her and her husband had taken their children out to dinner or what to hang out to the park. I don't know, just to kind of get them out of the house while she was recording. Anyway, I mean, it was kind of funny. It was like, oh my gosh, you know, this is this three hour podcast because we, we talked, I know it had to have been longer than an hour. We just talked and talked and talked and we had the best time getting to know each other a little bit more after our episode. And she has become one of my favorite, um, people and a really great friend. So it's kind of interesting how in so many of these episodes, we've talked about how Needlepoint has brought us together and we've developed friendships through Needlepoint or through a stitch club or through a class or even through um, Instagram and just being a supporter and encourager of one another. And um, it's totally crazy that the same <clears throat> thing happened. Um, you know, with Meg and I just totally, you can't pick your friends, right? Things just sort of people, you hit it off and, uh, Meg and I really hit it off and we, um, she is so funny and I appreciate her humor and I appreciate, um, so, so much of what, um, she brings, um, to the needlepoint community and, um, she has a lot of exciting things coming and, um, yeah. Anyway, so that's Meg. Meg's great. That's so fun. Yeah. We're, truly, we talked for like two hours after the, um, it's like the after show, right? That should be the next season, right? It's like the after, after show podcast. She was not the only guest that that I did that with, but but certainly ours was, it was quite long. I think it was, a like I said, a Friday, Friday afternoon. And then Kelly, y'all. Okay. Episode four was Kelly. Kelly was the first, she was episode four, but she was the first episode that I recorded. She was the first, um, you know, I, I didn't always release them in the order in which they were recorded, but, um, she was my first recording and, um, I was so darn nervous, but she was so great and she was so easy to talk to and 
we just, it was, it was easy just to have a conversation with her and talk about her life in Vermont and, um, her stitching community and her friends up there and, um, what that looked like. And uh, yeah, it was, it was really cool. And so she really, uh, helped put me at ease from that first interview is, um, you know, I did the rest of them. So Kelly, thank you. And thanks for joining. I'd never met Kelly before. Um, I had really enjoyed her work and she was someone that, uh, someone recommended. I actually, a few people said, have, have Kelly from Alice in Blue come on. And, um, yeah, I thought that was really cool. Really glad to have Kelly on episode four. So Kelly, thanks y'all. And Jessica, Island Stitching with Jessica, episode five. Uh, we told you our story about how we met and became stitching friends. And um, Jessica's episode was so meaningful to so many of you because she spoke about so bravely and courageously and openly talked about um, her anxiety particularly um, at the time when she was a new mom and had a young baby. And um, I don't know if she used the word postpartum depression. I think she, she did, you know, maybe said what well, she wasn't officially diagnosed, but that's probably what it was. She spoke about how she walked around feeling like there was an elephant on her chest at all times. And she discovered needlepoint. And since then, years later, um, it was so beautiful. She said, you know, that, that, that elephant has not returned and, um, how so many of her, you know, her best friends are friends that she's met through needlepoint and they don't even live. Um, some of them don't even live in the same time zones and live all over the country and have very different lives, but they are, um, great friends and talk all day, all the time. And I think that's so, so cool. So Jessica um, was great and she had a lot of wonderful, good, wonderful things to share. And um, it was really fun to talk to her. Um, it's one of my favorite episodes and I know it is one of yours as well. So Jessica, thank you. And um, yeah, Jessica, that was fun. Um, lots of good laughs too. Okay. Episode five. Y'all, episode five was Hannah Kwiatkowski who, I don't know if you know this, I think we talked about this, Hannah, I got up early in the morning to connect with Hannah, well, not that, I mean, like that early, but I mean, it wasn't like 4 a.m., but we got up sort of early because Hannah was in Germany, I think we talked about this, and so she was in Germany working, and we recorded our podcast, she has a, um, has a, like, killer, really super important job. And, um, was so kind of her to take time while she's working overseas to, um, she's a PhD in like epidemiology and yeah. So she, co she connects from overseas. I just thought that was amazing. And I'll tell you, I didn't pay these people anything. They spent so much. They were so, all of these guests were so accommodating with their time and their thoughtfulness. And they all were just so ready and willing to, to have this conversation with me. And they all came to the table with things that they wanted to discuss. And no one was like crazy about editing stuff. And clearly this show is not what I'm not an editor. I mean, and if there really wasn't anything edited, truly, the only thing that was edited out. So, you know, was, um, like if there was a technical diff, if there was a glitch, um, or something that really just was poor quality audio or visual that needed to be sort of corrected. So there's really no editing, um, as you can tell, probably from listening, um, very lightly edited raw footage here we have. So what am I telling you about this? No editing. Oh, they, yeah, nobody was like, don't, you know, nobody was weird about like, I need to listen to my episode first or, you know, they made it so, so easy and they totally trusted me just to put this stuff out there. So I will tell you, I, um, 
that was not, that was a huge responsibility that I felt particularly for people who, um, you know, had, they represented their businesses and, um, their own reputations and their character and things. And I just was, um, wanted to represent what they stood for and what they were trying to say. Um, but they, they made it so, so easy and they were so accommodating and all that jazz. So Hannah, y'all, she gets up. This chick is a riot. Okay. I could have talked to Hannah all day long. She made me laugh. And I'll tell you, I, I like to be funny. I appreciate humor. Um, but it takes a lot to, for me to laugh out loud. Um, and we had spoken one time before the recording. I did that with every guest just to kind of align our intentions to be sure we knew what we were you know, going to talk about. And I, I essentially said to them, you know, what would you like to talk about? And they all came, like they, every single one of them, I would ask the question, what would you like to discuss? They said, I want to talk about um, anxiety. I want to talk about, you know, being a new mom. I want to talk about meeting new friends. I want to talk about managing technology and putting my phone down. They, they were so awesome. I hit the jackpot. Um, so thank you. So Hannah, y'all, she's a riot. Um, Oh, this is what I was going to say. I wasn't expecting. I don't know what I expected from her. I think when she told me or when I found out that she was like a PhD in entomology, epidemiology, Ugh. Entomology is bugs. Epidemiology is like epidemics, diseases, or viruses, or I don't know, something. So that's what she does, not bugs. She does diseases. Um, epidemics. That's what she does. Um, I was like, oh, God. Whoa. Ooh. Okay. All right. I don't know how this is going to go. Um, I was a little intimidated. I was very, I wasn't just a little intimidated. I was very intimidated. And, um, she, she killed it. I loved her so much. And when she, we, we need to make, uh, I want to, you know, I mean, we even talked about Dolly Parton, needlepoint, needlepoint, Dolly Parton, saving the world. Um, yeah, I could have talked to her forever, but I mean, I think we had to like force ourselves to get off because she had like another meeting and it was like, time was, you know, she, we had to go, we had to wrap up the, the, the interview. But anyway, um, Hannah was great. Nicole Letts episode seven is so darn smart. This woman is killing it, killing it. She is killing life. I continue. I have followed her for a long time and, um, but. I guess now because the the Instagram algorithm has her now as like one of the people that I see most often, not because I'm stalking you, Nicole. It's just because I don't know, maybe I am. I'm not stalking you, but you know, um, she, so I see all of her stuff, I think more than maybe I had previously. She is killing it. She is writing a book or she's written a book. She's about to go on book tour for a book about Southern eat. That's not the name of it. Alabama eats. Shoot. This is so tacky. I need to have the name of her book. Darn it. Um, no, I have it right here. No, sorry. Okay. Here it is. Here it is. Da, 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 da. The eateries. Unique eats and eateries of Alabama. Whew. Unique Eats and Eateries of Alabama. She writes for Southern Living. She runs the Grand Millennial Shop. She needlepoint. She designs needlepoint. She write. I mean, she's just, she is totally killing life. And I'm so, I'm so, I don't even know her. I mean, I, who am I to be proud of her? But I want to say I'm proud of her. I'm so inspired by her. That's probably the right word. I'm so inspired by her. And she is doing what I think so, I think she, she said this on the podcast. She talked about how she's like, feels like she has all these balls in the air and that they, she's doing all these things that to some people may not make sense. Right. So she's a writer. She's writing a book about the American South. You know, she, her interest is the American South, but then she also has the grand millennial shop. She rescues needlepoint and other things that she has the grand millennial shop where you can 
purchase uh, things that she picks up at estate sales, um, and you can buy them from her online. And she's designing Needlepoint. And, you know, I think I said to her this in her podcast, I'm like, no, all of this stuff does make sense because it is so authentically you. I think that that is the key. When you think about people who have different, it's authentic and it's genuine. And so it does tie together because it all has to do with her. It's her hobbies and her passions and her interests and it's her gifts. So whether it's, you know, it seems like a lot or maybe it's disjointed. It's actually not because the joint, you know, the, the, the common theme through all of them is her. And I really think, you know, as I think about how my brand is growing or developing and my business is evolving, I, I really find, I do find myself being inspired and interested in all needlepoint inspired things. But I think that there's room for the, the brand or my brand or my business to grow um, because it's going, it, it is, it's happening. So um, I get that. It, to some people, it may not seem like, what? I don't understand why she's doing that. But it's all me. And I'm passionate about it and I'm excited about it. And um, I hope it, <laughs> I hope it, it all works out. And I think it, I, I know that it will um, because it's, uh, yeah, it's important to me and it's authentic. And um, I'm excited to share with you new things. What am I trying to say? There are new things. This is what I'm trying to say. New things coming to Mary Catherine Needlepoint that aren't just Needlepoint, but it's Needlepoint inspired. Like Needlepoint inspired stationary. Like Needlepoint inspired pajamas. I'm like turning red because I haven't like said that. I mean, I've said it out loud to people, but not like out loud, out loud to people. So yeah, so we have a lot of new exciting things that are coming very soon. Gorgeous stationery in gorgeous needlepoint pajamas. Yeah, right? Oh my gosh. So yeah, it's like pajamas. I thought she was a needlepoint designer. Well, yeah, but I'm so inspired by the needlepoint community and what everyone is doing with their, um, these retreats that everybody goes on and these stitch vacations and how these, you all are meeting up from all over the country and you're coming together and, um, you're wearing pajamas, which is like, I love pajamas. I love pajamas. I would live in pajamas if I could. I stay in pajamas a lot of the day. And I like really nice pajamas. I have very particular things that I like about a pajama. And I've found a way to bring my favorite pajamas to you. And they tell a needlepoint story. So <laughs> I'm really excited about that. And I can't wait to share them with you. So that's what I'm talking about. Nicole does it all. And um, she doesn't do it all. Let me say that. Let me know. She doesn't do it all. She does the things that are right for her and the things that she is good at, that she is gifted in, that inspire her and excite her and um, entertain her, right? And like, that's amazing. That You don't want to do it all. No. You want to do the right things for you. And she does it as a designer, as a writer, as a stitcher, and as a business owner, a small business owner of um, Grand Millennial Shop. Episode seven. That was Nicole. Oh, my gosh. Love it. Okay. Oh, my God. Ah, Anna. Episode eight. Anna. Anna. Eight. Anna Grabmeyer was one of the... Um, 
we, we talk about this in the episode, how Anna um, really helped me and inspired me early on and encouraged me to do this. And you follow my dreams, really. Um, and she was so, uh, she's such a lovely person. She is so, so kind. And she, you know, really talked about coming from so many of the other episodes. Uh, you know, we had found stitching a little bit later in life, but Anna really came from a stitching family. And um, now she has Evergreen Needlepoint, and it's really her mom. And her, she and her sister all work together um, running a needlepoint business, which is so, so cool. Um, and Anna is just such, she's so smart and she's such an entrepreneur and she thinks of really creative, um, ingenious designs and ways to make needlepoint more accessible. And um, she's lovely. That was episode eight. Anna, I will forever be grateful to you. And I will miss you. Anna is um, moving to Germany uh, with her husband's job. She and her family have moved to Germany. She still has Evergreen Needlepoint and is very much a part of that business. And it's it's here and still going. But uh, she's going to be in Germany for a few years um, with her family while her husband um, has been moved to Germany to work. So what an incredible experience for her and her family and um yeah but we'll miss you here in South Carolina Anna um okay y'all episode nine oh my gosh these girls Laura Ann and Alexandra these two ladies women reached out to me and asked me like hey can we be on your podcast early on and I don't know that I don't I don't know that they like talk to each other it was just kind of like they just sort of like, you know, closed their eyes and like hit send, I guess. And I don't know what they thought that I was going to say, but of course I was like, yes, oh my gosh, of course, please. And they were the best. I have gotten so much. I'll tell you, I've gotten feedback from every single episode. So many of you have really engaged in these episodes and you've listened to them and you've talked about them with your friends and your stitch clubs. And I can't tell you how much that means to me. Um, I got so, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's it's really humbling and so, so cool. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I got so many messages about these uh, two gals, Alexandra and Laura Ann from Louisville. Um, they were lots of fun. Um, I will say that was an episode that was like just like too long. Like we just talked and talked and talked. Oh, and the other thing that episode, they, there was a horrible storm. This is why it's not on YouTube. Oh my gosh. Yes. It's not on YouTube because there's this terrible, terrible storm in Kentucky. And so it would, the feed never stopped. I never, we never stopped recording, but cause if God knows if I had done that, I would have had no idea how to put it back together. So everything on my end kept going, but theirs was like, they would come in and out and it was, it was a mess, but then it was funny, but they were, um, just their passion and enthusiasm and excitement for needlepoint was incredibly exciting, but particularly so many of you all talked about their friendship and how lovely it was to see young professional girls who were newly married, um, find a sort of forever friend at that point in their lives, which is just such a remarkable gift. And, um, I could not agree more. And so that was really fun to see Alexandra and Laurie and, um, on episode nine and then Christy on episode 10. Oh my gosh. Christy talked about it just, I think it really, it really hit home for me and it really hit home for many of you when she talked about at a time in her life during COVID as a young mom with two very, very small children. I mean, babies, toddler, baby, one, two, maybe two under two, I think. Um, COVID, new mom, breastfeeding, had had a traumatic, um, life-threatening event that happened to her 
post delivery. Um, she was in the hospital with, you know, just a few days after her son was her second, her youngest son was born by herself. And now she had all of this trauma from, um, her birth and the things that had happened after, um, her, her son was born and, um, how, you know, she needed to talk to someone, but it was COVID and she had a house full of babies and husbands. And there was no way that she could really like virtually be present for an online, you know, therapy session. And that the thing that got her through was needlepoint. Yeah. Um, you know, I think we talk about, I think a lot of people who don't needlepoint can think this hobby is sort of just fluff and doesn't really understand the benefits of it. Um, the way those of us who have experienced it do. We, we, I think everyone, every single episode, every guest talked about it helped them be present. It helped them put their phone down. It helped them be more mindful. Talked about stress relief and relaxation, meditation, building a sense of community and friends and relationships, an artistic, creative outlet with your hands. I mean, all of these things that are important things that I think we, particularly as women, are trying to be more conscious of and intentional about when we think about what does it mean to live a good life. And um, as I know that I've said on these episodes before, you know, Needlepoint checks a lot of those boxes. Um, so it's a great, it's a great hobby for all of those reasons and many, many more. Um yeah. So, so, so Christy and others, I mean, Alexandra talked about doing it while her husband, uh, I mean, her father had, w was recovering from an accident. Um, needlepoint is just, it's such a great tool to have, um, in your toolbox whenever, whenever you need it, which is sometimes every day. Um, but even if it's something you've put down for whatever reason, um, at points in your life, so many of you have said, you know, I, I, I didn't, you know, I used to stitch, but I put it down for however many years and now I'm retired and I'm picking it back up and I love that. That's so cool. And last, but certainly not least, um, episode 11, Leslie and Laura from Texas. These gals, um, I, I'd never met them before. Um, I had communicated with them, um, via direct message. Um, they were just, I don't want to say just, I was going to say they were just stitchers. They're not just stitchers. I want, that's what's, what is important to me is we are all a part of this community, no matter what role you play in it, whether you are a shop owner or you're a designer or whether you're a finisher or whether you are, you know, post a lot of photos or do a lot of videos on social media um, or whether, you know, you, however you engage. Um, however active you are, you are an equal part of this community of needle pointers because it takes all of us. We're, we're, we all have, um, we all have important roles to play. And I think one of the most, I've said this and I will say it again, the most inspiring thing about the, the most inspiring thing for me um, when I have become since I've become more active on social media has been stitchers people who are not in the industry people who are not designers they're not needlepoint shops they are people who stitch 
because it's the people who stitch that that have a pulse on what's what people like, what is what's happening out there. Why are people, you know, I mean everything. I would have never we now have stitch school. I would have never thought that there was a market for people who wanted virtual needlepoint classes in the evening. Never. Since I met stitchers, they're like, yeah, we need this. We love this. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to be, to be able to uh, um, offer that. So, yeah. So just, there's no such thing as just a stitcher. I hear stitchers say that. It's like, well, I'm just a stitcher. It's like, no, you're not just a stitcher. Like, you are... This, this whole needlepoint is exists because of you, and I wanted to. Yes, certainly there were people on on the the the, the show that have businesses and are designers and are finishers and um, certainly earn money for their work um, and their artistry in this needlepoint world. But I really wanted the conversation. Certainly, yes, I wanted to, an opportunity to, to promote their businesses, but but most importantly to me was I wanted to have a conversation about needlepoint. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, I have my friend, a good friend of mine, uh, told me that she wasn't too sure about she wasn't she didn't know that she would like the episodes of the Stitchers, you know, non business people. But then she said they were her favorite episodes because she was, she really felt, I think, like she could connect. Um, anyway, what am I trying to say? Oh, my gosh. Leslie and Laura. This is what I was going to say. Leslie and Laura are what Needlepoint is all about and what the Needlepoint community is all about because I met these two remarkable, creative, smart, brilliant, funny women through Needlepoint. I mean, they just, I don't even know, like, I guess it was like they liked something or they commented something and they, or there was, we exchanged some humorous banter about something funny or whatever. And um, they were great. They were so supportive. I mean, when I first started, they were so amazing. They bought the sweatshirts and they showed off their sweatshirts and they took pictures of them and they posted them and they wore them. And then they took pictures of themselves in the sweatshirts, which was just like so darn cute and so fun. And I'm telling you, y'all, when you're a new business, when you're starting a new business and you've got people that are just so generous and so supportive like that, like they didn't know me from Adam and uh, yeah, they're amazing. Everybody, everybody, um, has and have, have, have been, I mean, it's, it's been remarkable. So Leslie and Laura, oh my gosh. Okay. This conversation was the one that really like totally rocked my like needle point mind. So first like Texas state fair, we have to go. I want to like, we need a trip, like a needle point trip to the Texas state fair. Okay. We should do that. We can make that happen. All right. And then all this question about like all these secrets about the threads, about glisten and entice and all this stuff. I'm going to reach out. I'm going to, I'm telling you this, you've heard it here first, folks. I'm going to reach out to someone who really, actually a few people, hopefully I, I, I want to get some experts true, like not just the experts from these thread, from Rainbow Gallery, from Vineyard Silk and Vineyard Merino and from Planet Earth. I want to get these people on. You think they would come on the show? And I want to them like, I want from the horse's mouth, right? I want to like ask them all these questions. Um, yeah, wouldn't that be fun? Like to do a season of like thread guests. 
been thinking about that one for a long time. So, um, yeah, season one, highlighting the lives of stitchers and talking about why needlepoint is so great. And I think, I mean, I'm, I think what these conversations have done for me very personally is they have really solidified that this is not a hobby that is going anywhere. This hobby is not dying. It's not going anywhere because of all of these incredible benefits that it offers you. It's not just a trend. It's not just popular. I think when we think like, oh, it's trendy, it's the cool thing to do, like it's still not the cool thing to do. Like most of the people in the world don't know about needlepoint. Um, like we in our own mind think, I mean, it is cool for us, but like it's this is still a very small niche niche um community and hobby, right? It's not like golf. It's needlepoint. Um but I know for I'm certain this hobby is not going anywhere because this is not just like, oh, it was popular during COVID. Like COVID's over. No more, you know, I mean, we're not quarantined anymore is what I mean. You know, like that period of time is we're not in a pandemic right now. So people are continuing to come into the hobby. Um, I did a class, y'all, the other day, like a little drop in, just like who wants to be curious about needlepoint? 14 people came, 14 people came and we talked about these things, mindfulness, putting your phone down, being able to be present with your family, but still be productive and not feel guilty because you're not like doing something around the house. You're able to like do something with your hands. And so you don't feel like you're, it's just idle time that you're wasting. So it is it is confirmed for me or affirmed for me that needle needlepoint is not going anywhere. And that's a great thing. And I think that this community will only continue to grow. And it will grow with people who care about these things. Like mindfulness, quiet time, you know, being a a solitary hobby that the rhythm of the stitches provides some relaxation and stress relief. People that are intentional about uh, gift giving or family holidays and traditions and births and weddings, really thoughtful, intentional people who are okay with investing time and energy and money with things that take time that see value in the things that may not offer instant gratification. Um, People who appreciate times away from their phone and look for ways to be healthy, truly, um, and create a legacy. You know, it's so strange. So many people were saying, you know, it's great. We talk about these things. These are going to be things that my family are going to use when I'm gone. I mean, that's legacy, people. That's what that is. Yeah. So is the hobby um, going anywhere? No. I don't think it is. And that is so great. And, um, yeah, it totally makes sense, right? When you talk about all of those things that I mentioned, mindfulness, stress relief, productivity, creativity, using things with your hands. Um, Of course we love it. And there's things are just so darn cute and it's so fun and it just feels so good to run the thread and you create a beautiful, fun, cheeky 
sassy, fancy, sophisticated, traditional, um, gorgeous things to put in your home for holidays and for every day. Okay. I'm just like shuffling these notes here and I don't even know why what's on here. Uh, that's not for that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. So I don't think I have anything else in my notes. So all of this to say, wrapping up season one. Oh shoot. I forgot. Okay. No, this is what we're going to do. Okay. You ready? All right. I'm going to, here we go. I'm going to ask myself these own questions. Okay. 18 or 13. Um, I actually have a lot of 13 in my house because I like pillows that have fun sayings on them. And so a lot of those are 13. Um, I like the speed of 13, but I only like 13 if it's just like a really simple canvas, just a few colors, you know, an easy pillow, easy peasy. I like 13 just fine, but my favorite is 18. I love 18. And I actually like that 18 takes a little longer. Sometimes 13 just goes too fast. 18. I like them both, but if I had to choose, I would say 18. Stretcher bars are in hand. In hand. I've never stitched on stretcher bars. Ever. Never. That's not true. I took one class. And there were on stretcher bars. But other than that, never stitched on stretcher bars. I'm a total enhanced stitcher. I know all of the benefits of stretcher bars. I think that I will stitch on stretcher bars for things that I want to be self-finished going forward, but I haven't done it yet. And I think if I do, I will need a stand because I don't, I think it would hurt my wrist. I have like a weird, um, you don't even want to know. Like I have a little um, wrist thing. And so I think it would hurt. I think it would irritate my wrist if I held it the way that you would have to hold it with the stretcher bars, you know? So I think I would definitely need a stand. And... I have a question here, floor or lap stand. You know, I actually think that I would prefer a floor stand because I almost think that a lap stand would make me feel a little, I mean, I know that a lap stand's great, like if you're sitting at a table, but I don't sit at a table when I'm at home. I sit with it in my lap. I mean, I would, you know, I mean, no, I, at home I sit, you know, like in a chair or on the sofa or whatever. So. I don't sit at a table and stitch at home and I wouldn't mo start stitching at a table. So I almost think that a lap stand at home might make me feel a little claustrophobic. Like it would be too close. I don't know. Is that a thing? I don't know. I kind of think I, I would want a floor stand. I don't know. Who knows? We'll see. Big projects or small projects. Mm. This is tough. I like them both. I love ornaments. Love an ornament. I can't decide. I love an ornament. And I love big projects. If I love a big project, I'm not in I'm really not intimidated. You should not be intimidated by a big project. Think of a big project as just a lot of a little pro lot a lot of small projects. And you can put it down. I mean, there's no time frame. Um, you know, sometimes you need to put down a big project for a while and do another small one. That's fine. Um no, I, I love a big project. I mean, I've not done like a rug or anything crazy like that. Um, I mean, a rug, like mm, I'm probably not going to do a rug. Um, but like a stocking, you should not be timid, intimidated by a stocking. Now, let me say, am I going to do a stocking that has tons of shade, like tons of shading on it? No, but I don't do small projects with uh, I mean, I like shading, but you know, tons of shading. No. All right. Don't be intimidated by big projects. My favorite type of thread. Okay. Favorite type of thread. I totally go through phases on this. 
Like I love something. This is how I am about just life. So I find something that I like and then I just, I will find something I like for lunch and I will eat that same lunch every day for, I mean, months, months. I mean, yeah, it's kind of weird. I mean, when I say months, I don't mean like one, two, three, like four, five, six months. Yeah. And then I get sick of it and then I change it. But boy, while I'm eating it, like I love it. Same for breakfast. Like I have a thing and it's like, I do the same thing with threads. So I didn't realize I did, but I did. So I got on a pepper pot kick because everyone was like talking about pepper pot in my stitch club. Love, love, love pepper pot. Everybody was talking about pepper pot. And, um, so I started stitching with pepper pot, not just because they liked it, but I was like, oh, okay, let me check this pepper pot thing out and see, is it really as great as everyone's talking about it? Because I don't really think that it had stitched that much with pepper pot. And, um, I did, I got totally on a pepper pot kick and it, I think it just happened. There were some projects that I was working on that pepper pot had the right color and, um, color is more important to me than a thread, a fi you know, it's a particular brand or type of fiber. I want the color to be right. I would, I will put, I will stitch on something that's not my favorite to get the color that I want. But anyway, so I was like on this pepper pot kick and I was like stitching every, I was loving pepper pot. I still love pepper pot, but then for some reason I started stitching with the summer. I was stitching a lot with Vineyard Merino and I, then I like got on this Vineyard Merino kick. I mean, I was like designing stuff that were, that I could use Vineyard Merino for. I mean, I was loving Vineyard Merino. And now like, I'm kind of, I don't know what the next thing is going to be. I think it's, I like feel it that it's going to be, um, it's kind of between two things. Like it's going to be either essentials, which I'll tell you, I have not stitched a ton with essentials, but I'm stitching something right now with essentials. Obsessed. Why have I not stitched with essentials? I know why my local needlepoint shop doesn't have essentials. That's probably why I have not stitched with essentials. But I'm loving essentials. Loving it. But it's been a hard transition going from wool to essentials because, you know, I just have to get used to it. I've been used to the wool that, you know, kind of has a drag to it. Um, there is no drag to this essentials. Um, and then I'm getting ready to stitch something with vineyard silk. So it's going to be one of the two. It's probably going to be my next favorite. Can I thread a needle without a needle threader? You all know this. No, I cannot. I've read all of your suggestions. I can't do it. I can't. I don't think I will ever be able to. That's okay. Do I have a favorite stitch? Yes. My favorite stitch is basket weave. I basket weave almost everything. I love basket weave. I love it because I love the ease of it, but I also love the way that it looks. I love the way that it looks. I like that it's just simple. It's just really fresh and it feels really clean and it looks like traditional, just kind of needlepoint. And what I mean by that is it's simple. You know, I think sometimes I love all of the decorative things that everyone is doing. There's so much ribbon work and beads and there's all these incredible things out there um, that are gorgeous. Um, but for me, sometimes it it like doesn't, it kind of feels like it becomes not needlepoint anymore. And I don't, I mean, needlepoint is a type of embroidery but it feels like it's more embroidery, more hand embroidery or hand something than just needlepoint. And I guess when I, I'm sure some of that semantics, I'm probably going to get some nasty, don't send me nasty grams. Please don't send me nasty grams. I just don't know what I'm talking about. 
Um, no, I'm kidding. I do know what I'm talking about. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? I love basket weave. That's all I'm saying. I'm not poo-pooing on the decorative stitches. I just love the simplicity and almost plainness. Yes, it's plain. Yes, I like that. Of that. Okay, favorite needlepoint tool? A needlepoint threader, because there would be no needlepoint for me were there not a needle threader. Um, but after that, I love a snag nabbit. And I also love the easy snips, the hook and snips, easy hook and snips. I use them in needlepoint and outside of needlepoint. Could not live without an easy snip. Tilly Thomas needle snip. Easy hook and snip. Scissor hook thing. How many canvases are in my stash? Okay, so this is the deal with that. So I, when I first started stitching, I went berserko, like many of you. And I bought a lot of canvases. A lot. Because I guess I thought, like, I could never get them again. You know, it was like if I saw something, I was like, I better get it now. It's going to be gone. Like, never going to find it again. Little did I know, you can find them again for the most. I mean, you know, yeah, some you can't. But anyway, there, there's not always, there was, there's not the lack. Um, I don't know. I just, it was like I had to have it. I wanted it in my stash. Even if I knew, this is how crazy we are. Even though I knew, like, I can't stitch this for three years. Like, I had my stitching planned out. You know, that's the other thing, right? We, like, plan our stitching. So you're like, I'm going to stitch this, and then I'm going to stitch this, and then I'm going to stitch this. And then I, I had, like, three years of stitching, like, planned out in my stash. And I was still buying stuff. So, so all of this to say, I had a ton of needlepoint in my stash. And then I was like, this is ridiculous. And I all, this is how bad it was. I had so much stuff in my stash. Like there wasn't a ton of stuff out there that I liked that I didn't already have. Does that make sense? That That's not totally true, but you know, I bought a lot of what I wanted to stitch. And so then I was like, this is ridiculous. And so I, I had planned my stitching out like three years of stitching. No, no kit, no joke. And, um, I like, I really, I think there were probably a few years there where I really didn't buy that many canvases. I truly stitched through my stash, which was great because, you know, I needed to, I had spent all that money on these canvases, but, um, I had a lot of finishing costs that year. Um, but I really stitched through my stash. So now my stash, I don't know how many, stitched, how many canvases do I have in my stash? I, I really don't have that many. Um, I don't know. I probably have between 10 and 15, which I had 50, around 50 probably. But I stitched all, I mean, truly, I stitched all those. So it's way down. And now, this is the hard part. I stitch. There's a few things in my stash that I, I really want to stitch. But if it, now, with Mary Catherine Needlepoint, it's so hard. I mean, I don't know when I'm ever going to, I'm just going to have to take a week and say, I, I'm not going to, you know, because the reason it's hard is I'm stitching samples and things for, you know, new designs that are coming out, right? So I have a finished sample and I'm stitching my own designs, which is really fun and I enjoy. Um, I always say, if I don't want to stitch it, I'm not going to ask you to stitch it. You know, like it's bad if you don't like your own designs. Um, so yeah, I'm stitching a lot of my own things, so I don't really have time to stitch. Yeah, but there are a few things I I want to get done. Um, okay. Oh my gosh, what advice? Okay, this is the last one. We're wrapping this up. Um, what advice would I give a new needle pointer? Ask lots of questions and there are no, there's no dumb question. 
There's no stupid question. There's no silly question. Ask a lot of questions. Yeah, that would be my advice. Okay, this is the end of season one. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for your incredible uh, support of this show and of me uh, personally. Uh, thank you for supporting my business and um, sharing it with others, telling people about it and telling other stitchers about the show. If you have a friend that you think might be interested in Needlepoint, introduce them to Needlepoint Living. Maybe it will um, inspire them to start a canvas or go to a beginner class. Who knows? Um, so thank you for, for that. Thank you for engaging. I, you all have been so great and you send me messages on Mondays after you've listened to the episode and that brings me so much joy and it's so incredibly rewarding and it's very inspiring and it's truly a gift to hear from you. So I will tell you, I'm not great at direct messages. Sometimes they get lost. Um, and sometimes I think I reply in my head and I don't always. And sometimes I reply uh, later than, than, um, I would like to, because sometimes I want to thoughtfully be able to reply and that requires me to, you know, either get home or, or whatever. Um, but please know that every single message that you send or every email that you send truly means the world to me. I appreciate it so much. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and thank you to my guest. You guys, um, I will forever be so appreciative for your time and your generosity that you have given me to, to join me on the show and to have these conversations with me and to be vulnerable and to really open up and talk so honestly and candid about your lives and then allowed me for many of you, somebody that you didn't even know to share them with others, um, and just put them out there. And it's been a humbling experience for me and I'm so grateful. So thanks, man. It's crazy. Thank you for listening to the first season of Needlepoint Living. Season two will be out. Uh, I don't know when season two is going to be out, but season two, there will be a season two. So this is not going to end. So don't stop, you know, continue to listen and subscribe and pay attention because there will be a season two. And there will also be some special, I, I do know this, between now and the end of the year, there are going to be some special additions. So it's not going to be a season. It's not going to have a theme, but it's going to be a special edition needlepoint living. We have quite a few of these coming up between now and the end of the year. Needlepoint living special edition. It's not season two, but it's special editions. So stay tuned. Keep following. Um, season two will probably be here. Let's let me give myself a break and give you a break who there's no way season two is going to be here before the end of 2023. So we'll just go ahead and say season two will be here in 2024, but there are going to be special editions, really good special editions. So keep us on your dial or on your radar, uh, because these are going to be episodes that you do not want to miss. If you have any questions or comments, concerns, or feedback, always reach out to me. If you want to know more about Needlepoint Living, um, you can go to needlepointliving.com, which will take you to my website. And um, you can click on the Needlepoint Living link there, and you can find out more about the show and our guests and um, a little bit more about me and what 
uh, all all of the best things that Needlepoint has to offer. There we go. Thanks again for listening. And I will see you very soon um, for a special edition Needlepoint Living. That is true. I'll see you soon for a special living, special edition Needlepoint Living. Thank you so much for listening and um, look forward to seeing you very soon.